Yo, this is Dev. Wine and Hip Hop West Coast. We are in beautiful Marina Del Rey, California. I am with one of my good, good guys, Dovec Quince right here. Act I had to Google him. Actor, <laughs> entrepreneur, model. I didn't know what else to throw in there. And it, as it turns out, my man knows a lot about wine. Dovet, how are you? Good, good. Great Thanks to see that, you, baby. Appreciate Great to see you, you, baby. Appreciate you. Um, one of the writers here at Wine and Hip Hop. What we do is educate the culture. We bring wine to the hip hop community. Um, there's, as you know, a lot of uh, a lot of the hip hop community is just getting involved in wine, which is great for me. I'm a certified wine specialist in sommelier. I get to interact with people like this every day. It's amazing. I've met this guy and it's been great ever since, man. How are you? I'm good. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. Thank you, Everything friend. good? It's good to be here. Thanks for having me. Enjoying I, this. I love the combination. I appreciate it. Hip hop, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, man, we trying to do the things. culture, man. It's tough. Um, Dovet's working on a lot of things right now. Um, he, you can follow him on Instagram, at Dovet. Before we even get into this interview, how in the hell did you get Dovet as your name on Instagram. That's like it me was, coming and getting Devin. Did you have to? Who did, who did you have to call at Instagram? Who did I've you have to call at Facebook to get Dovet? How did that happen? I've been to both locations. Um, however, it was easy because there's not a lot of Dovets out there. Yeah. You know what I mean? Devin's a more common name than Dovet. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? True. So when I did it, it was it was easy. I just felt like it would be. I mean, I was. Like, I mean, now I because of everything that happened, there's all these pseudo right you know pages right. and stuff i've seen that you gotta watch there. out for that it's a lot of fake dovets out there you know what this I mean? is not the fake dovet nah, there's nah. only one dovet it's and it's just slim shady it's just dovet <laughs> what is that like man just popping up and and, and seeing people honestly i, I kind of feel like uh, you know imitation is the best form of flattery is it one of those things that you uh, you immediately just get on there and just shut it down? Because like I said, I've I've seen a lot of little fake pages rolling around. Um, be careful with that. I never let it. I never used to let it bother me. Mm -hmm. I think until uh, I was hacked to the sense of where they were posing posing as me and putting pictures of me, private pictures of me ah, on the net, yeah, yeah, yeah. pulling all of my followers, putting it on another social media, but going trying to get into my bank account, trying to get my money's wire. Ooh. So when all that happened my guard went up. Ooh. I became super cautious about any and anybody that's trying to, any and everybody who's trying to put my name and then claim this exactly. name. Because people just don't put the name up. Exactly. They don't do another page. Exactly. They start interacting with my fans and, and my followers. And exactly. I don't like that. Like, yeah, I, you, you know, don't, yeah. It's really like, so I'm super uh, protective of them right. more than anything. Right. A lot of you guys may know no, no Dovet from uh, being a celebrity trainer on uh, The Biggest Loser. Dovet, how was that experience on The Biggest Loser? Tell me all about it was, that. Um, it was interesting. It was interesting because I was able to do the very thing that I love while coupling it with the things that I love. Right. Let me explain. Like, I love acting. I love being on television. I love that platform, right? right. And I've done those things via commercials, sitcoms, whatever it may have been. Um, but I truly love helping people view themselves and or transform themselves in a different way. Right. I did that work for years. So when I got this job, which authentically blended both loves, it was an easy transition for me. Right, right. No, that's really cool. Uh, also, you will uh, see in a second that uh, we both share uh, two of the same passions, wine Word. and hip hop. Uh, speaking of wine, we are sipping some real we went real wakanda this is this is a very special wine that we got right here um we have a sadie family palladius this is 33 percent chin and blanc it's actually a blend of nine different grapes so a lot of wow. these uh producers will uh mix a bunch of different grapes sometimes they'll be 100 percent, but this is common in this area uh why this is so special um to me and to dovet is because this is from south africa um, a lot of people may not know, yes, they do make wine in South Africa. Um, basically, it is too fucking hot to grow wine in most parts of Africa, but it just so happens that in South Africa, it falls right into that temperate zone. So that's why you see uh, them being able to grow some Chenin Blanc in South Africa. Uh, this is a phenomenal wine. It's kind of hard to find. It's about 100 bucks a bottle, but for anybody looking for something light, perfect day like this, it's just... 
got a lot of acid, a lot of minerality. It's pretty bomb. So it's it's definitely something to uh, to check out if, if you haven't had it before. Cheers, my brother. Cheers, bro. For sure. Your birthday is coming up, man. It is, man. Happy birthday. Happy Thank birthday. You. Thank you. Ironically, we were just sitting here uh, before we started shooting and we were looking at uh, an old Chicago Bulls game. We, those? we, we both are, are fans <laughs> of some old basketball. And uh, my cameraman right here, he, he kind of laughed at me because the game that was on was from 1997. Well, I was, I'm not going to say exactly how old I am, but I was a kid. I remember watching the game and he, he, he said he was, what, you were a year he old? He wasn't born yet. He was, wasn't even born. He, he, was, born he was a year old. He wasn't born yet. So ironically, we were coming in here and we were talking to, uh, to Dovet about it. And uh, you mentioned your son was born uh, a couple days after that. He was born that year. He that born year. In that year. Yeah. Speaking of inspiration a second ago, and, and what you'll see is a lot of what Dovet does is passion. Um, that's what I get from him is, is uh, from the work he does, uh, from the things that he is able, luckily able to do in your life. Mm -hmm. Everything is passion, music, wine. Um, and if you uh, check out Dovet's Instagram, you'll see that one of his biggest inspirations in his life is his son, Zay. How old is he? Isaiah is 21. 21 years old. Um, and I meant to ask you because, uh, like I said, you, you see a lot of cool things uh, that you post about him. How has he been inspirational uh, for you? Because he's, he's 21 years old now, he's a young man. Has it been seeing him mature into a, a young man that's been inspirational for you? Is it the, the things that he's doing in life? What, what do you, what do you, when you see Zay, what do you, what do you think of? I think of, um... I'm in a position I'm forced to be patient. You know, I'm, I'm, I have such high expectations for him. I know my path, I know what I've been, I know the struggles. Right. I removed a lot of those struggles for him. Right. But then he has his own struggles, right? right? He has his own things that he has to deal with. Right. I try to temper that. Right. I try to put a wedge between, you know, potential hostility and try to stop it before it becomes big. Right. Um, but then there's times that I have to master backing off, right. right? So that he can have those experiences, so he can become his own man, so he can have his own issues to, to, to deal with and also make him uh, a problem solver. Right. You know, and, and not, not be so um, coddled in life. Exactly. But and, be able to temper things. And I admire you a lot as a dad, man. I think we talked before about uh, some of the struggles growing up. I grew up in St. Louis, yeah. uh, kind of divided family, and I kind of had a rough upbringing. So, a lot of what happened to me in life is I had to learn from uh, from from the from the bad example. I had to learn what not to do. You know what I mean? The bad example was given to me, and I had mm -hmm. to figure it out. Mm -hmm. um, but that's it's, one thing parents do: they they teach you what to be or what not to be. Right. Just through their behavior. Right. See, I'm learning. I'm just talking to him. I'm just sitting here learning. Um, and I saw that you guys went to the White House, man. Yeah. yeah. How was that? That was. First of all, it was unexpected. Right. I did a keynote uh -huh. and spoke to about 4,000 uh, people in the medical field. Okay. Surgeons, medical doctors, right. uh, um, um, nurses, you name it. They have their conference, CRT, right. which is a cardiovascular research technology group. Right. right? I think it was their 10th annual or 11th annual, whatever it was. I did my keynote. Uh -huh. I spoke. And they then invited me to go sit on the panel. Now, I'm on a panel with some of the brightest people in, in, the, in, in the world. Were you in D.C. for I this? I was in D.C. for this. Were you at, was it at the White House or were you just? It was at a hotel. It was at a hotel. Okay. Um, and again, it's their conference. So all these people go to this hotel and they mix and mingle and they, you know, right. eat whenever they do. And, you know, it's just great. Yeah. I sat on that panel and people started firing questions. I'm not right. the smartest guy up there, obviously. I'm with surgeons and medical doctors and lead physicians who run major hospitals, right. um, president of hospitals, et cetera. And someone asked a the question. They said, um, Dalvet, what can we do as medical people in the medical field to ensure that our patients become healthy and stay healthy? I said, you have to become what you're asking. Right. You can't just tell them, here, take these pills, but yet you yourself might be overweight or have a bad lifestyle. 
you have to be there. Why aren't doctors walking into the diagnostic room with sneakers on? <laughs> Give me some visual pro, you know what I mean? Give me right. something visually to say, oh, Doc, what you got sneakers on for? Why you got those kicks on? Oh, because right. I work out, take care of myself. You may be the very line, last line of defense of someone taking care of themselves. And by the way, why are there no hospitals? Why are there no gyms and hospitals? Hmm. hmm. Right? And so I started having that dialogue with them. I said, who's going to do anything about, something about that? And the guy who led the whole thing said, you are. You should do something about it. So I've made it my life's mission to put a gym in every hospital wow. in every state in the United States. It is my life's mission. I will see wow. to it that it gets done. I'm already working on three hospitals as we speak. That's incredible. But I digress. Where is Obama? Where is Obama? Where is Obama? I'm there. I'm done. I'm signing on. I'm talking to folks, you know, mixing and mingling. The guy who led the, the, the whole thing, he's been known to be stern, but for whatever reason, we connected. Right. And he was like, are you staying tomorrow? I'm, in, I'm interviewing President Obama, doing a fireside chat with him, similar to this. What would you ask him? I said, ask him, what's his talent and what's next? Okay. He said, okay, I like those. He said, are you staying to meet him? I said, no, I'm, my bags are packed, I'm ready to go. His assistant said, Dalvet, we'd love for you to stay. Oh my God. So I'm freaking out. And Zay like, is with you this whole time? No, he's not with me. He's here in California. I'm in DC. Oh wow, okay. So I call him up, yo, they want me to stay. <laughs> I get to meet President Obama. He said, yo dad, that's crazy. But I can't go, son, tomorrow's your birthday. I'm gonna stay, tomorrow is your birthday. You're turning 21. Wow. He said to me, and I quote, Pops, don't worry about it. Yeah. I'll always have birthdays. This is yeah. a once in yep. a lifetime opportunity. Yep. I looked at my phone like, no, that's my son. Exactly. Right you feel me? Exactly. I said, nah, I'm a You this did out. that. Word. You did that. I hung up the phone, went to them and said, hey, look, not for nothing. Tomorrow's my twenty my son's twenty first birthday. Right. I can't I can't do this to him. I'm gonna go I'm gonna go home. I got a nice gift waiting on him the whole thing. So they said, Why don't we just fly him out? We'll fly him out first class, put him up and put you guys up in the suite. Show. They put us up in the presidential suite Show. in the hotel. Yeah. I'll never forget the ghost suite. It was great. The ghost suite. Yeah, I don't know why they call I it ghost suite. You know what I'm saying? I'm it was, to get it was on spooky. That level where I yeah. ghost Listen, suites. we did it. <laughs> the next day, we were the first two people in line out of 30 VIPs to uh -huh. go see President Obama. We saw him, met him. I introduced myself. I said, the last time I was here in D.C., I trained your wife at the White House yeah. on the show. He said, the biggest loser. Yeah. I said, yeah, you, you yeah. remember that? He said, yes, yeah. I remember that. Yeah. Da -da -da, we chopped it up. And if you see the photo, it's, it's the three of us, big it's smile. Perfect. And I said, today is my son's 21st birthday. He was like, well, happy birthday, young man. And just that moment yeah. of, of being with the very first black president, the 44th president, the most poised and articulate president of our time, right. of, of any time, I feel, um, if I were 21, I'd want that moment. Of you know course, what I mean? I'd, I'd want to say, wow, I, 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 can, I can now as a man be inspired. Now, right. hopefully he's been inspired for most, most of his life, but I think in that moment, I can only imagine what it was like for him. Right. And I was so happy to have given him that opportunity. That's incredible, man. Yeah, man. I, 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 and, and if that was, a, that was a couple of years back, I mean, I guess it's always a good thing to think that you caught him at the right time. You yeah. know what I mean? Was it his second term? No, that he was done. Oh, wow. This just happened this year. Oh, wow. This yeah. just happened. Blessings, man. Man, this happened yeah. in March. Cheers to that, Cheers man. To that, Cheers right? to that, Oh, man. Cheers not, to that. Not only, not only you having the opportunity to do that, but being able to, to communicate that, you know, your son was still an important part of your life, and then being able to have them available to fly him out and have him meet him, like that's incredible. The crazy thing about that story is, Isaiah and I came home, we were high, man. We were high on life. Like, <laughs> dude, this well, just pour happened. some more wine while you tell I me I appreciate this. that. Did we just meet President Obama? Did they put us up? Like, we were just gassed off. You know, been very blessed, knock on wood, to have a very fruitful, fruitful life. Right. But there's moments like that you don't take for granted, right? You really soak it in. We got home. I let an entire day pass. The next evening, I said to him, yo, Zay, let's watch a movie. He said, all right, cool. Let's, you know what I mean? I said, come in, come in a movie room. Let's watch a movie. So uh, the four of us sat down, my girl, his girlfriend, me and him. And we're chilling. I'm having a good time, whatever. And I went to go push play. 
But before I push, push play on the movie, let me tell you what the movie was. With no idea that I'd meet President Obama, with no idea what was going on, I reached out to 20 men, 20 friends of mine that I look to for advice, that lean on me for advice, men that I admire their opinion, men that Isaiah has looked up to, vice versa. And I said to them, if you were 21, what would you want someone to say to you? What advice would you give someone at that age? Right. Make a one to two minute video. Really? And put it together. And I took 20 of the voices of those men. Wow. You know, some celebrity types, businessmen. Right, it doesn't right, matter who right, they were. Right. They were just 20 voices. Right. I was the 21st voice. Nice. And I comprised this video of 21 voices and gave it to my son. He sat there and he watched the whole thing. Meeting President Obama, flying to DC first right. class, so getting, getting to a ghost suite. Right. All that was crumbs. Because in that moment, on that couch, listening to that advice, that priceless advice, right. his whole face was wet. Really? Just in tears. But can you Christ. imagine the, the impact? So dope. I, uh, no, that, that's a powerful story, man. And, and being able to have the opportunity to do something like that is, is incredible. And then show it to your son. I think 21 is like one of those ages where you can go one way or the other. Mm -hmm. So so being able to, to be there and guide him, man, like I said, every time I see it, man, it's a beautiful thing. Yeah, man. It's a beautiful thing for sure. Let's talk about this wine and jump into this music. Mm -hmm. We'll take a quick break. We'll be right back. Yo, yo, Dev, writer at Wine and Hip Hop. I got my man Dovet Quince here, one of my close friends. Dovet, Empowered in Paradise. Yeah, man. Tell me about Empowered in Paradise, man. I've been checking it out. Empowered in Paradise is dope for me because I basically get to do the work that I've always done on The Biggest Loser and even prior to it, right. which is empower individuals, help them see themselves in another light, give them tools to not only get better but stay better. I think right. it's key. Um, right. Oftentimes people try to lose weight, then they fall off the wagon and they gain it back. Oftentimes people try to be in a better mental space and they're depressed again. I think it's not just about what to do for immediate gratification, what do you do to sustain it if some coach is in front of you or not? Empowered in Paradise is that work. Right. You know, I loved the one-on-one -on -one conversations. I loved getting to the core of the reason why you even carried the weight in the first place. But sometimes symptoms are obvious, right? Sometimes you see someone, oh, that woman is overweight, she needs to lose 60 pounds. But sometimes you can't see the symptoms. Sometimes they're overweight up here, mm -hmm. or they're overweight in here. Okay. So Empowered in Paradise is retreats around the world. That's awesome. You man. know what I mean? But you put your phone down, you unplug, and you plug back you back in. Uh -huh. So we catered to men and women who own companies and need to recharge. Right. We catered to couples who need a reboost. We catered to young people that just want to have an escape or maybe going through levels of depression, you whatever it might be. the whole be. retreat's up for them The and retreats are set. Damn, There's I five, it's, it's unbelievable. <laughs> There's five levels of um, health that uh -huh. we address. Yep. You know, oftentimes people see me and they assume, okay, we're gonna work out, but it's so much more than that. Right. That's the physical health, right. right? But there's emotional, there's spiritual, there's social, right? And then there's mental. Right. So I've hired and have partnered with some of the most intelligent women on the planet uh, uh, to be keynotes, guest speakers. Uh, you, you'll, you'll do um, quizzes to kind of help us understand how to work with you specifically. So it's right. very a la carte, it's very uh, customized, and it's an amazing experience. You have a backdrop like this, right. but you're getting to the heart of becoming better. So. I love it. Empowered in paradise. And 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 what I like I said I mentioned this earlier. What I always like about what Dovet does is it's just as much about the fact that whether it could be losing weight, um, you know, doing achieving any type of goal in life, but you always touch on the intellectual side of it. You always touch on the psychology uh, aspect of it. And I think that you know we were talking about life just being mental in so many aspects. Is that's that's what's really important and that brings into that. Uh, back to the conversation that we're passionate I always talk about. Everything you do is passionate. I respect that. I love that. Thank you, D. So we're gonna talk about some some hip hop, man. So so I met Dovet. Uh, been known Dovet for a while now. Uh, one of my favorite moments of you, man. I don't know if you know this. Uh, we were hanging out recently, 
and uh, we were in traffic. We were going to an event down in Hollywood, and we were in Dovet's car, and Dovet's just going through some tracks, just playing some, some songs and everything. And as we're sitting in the car, we're on like Santa Monica Boulevard. We're going like, you know, it took us three thir- miles probably. Th- yeah, thirty minutes to go <laughs> three miles or, or three blocks probably. Literally we're on this little little stretch, but we're vibing out. And I think at the time you were playing some uh, some of the uh, the new Carter's album, the uh, Jay Z and Beyonce mm-hmm. playing a song. That ironically, I picked some songs on that album, but the song that you were playing. I hadn't heard. Mm. So I'm listening to it and I'm like, damn. I was like, why didn't I get mm. that? So Dovet's in the car vibing out to this music, like losing it. I'm trying to catch, I'm trying to catch the wave. The wave's not quite there for me. Mm-hmm. And I'm trying to catch it. And you just in there bumping it. And at one point, Dovet literally <laughs> leans over out of his driver's side window. We're stopped in traffic. He leans over at the stoplight. He goes, I love this song. <laughs> And I was like, damn, that 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 told me I was like, this guy is again, they're passionate about music, just like everything. I into can't believe it. you remember that. I forget what song it was, but uh, I think it was Boss. I think it was. Y'all, Boss. man, he was all into it, man. Yeah, man. Um, so so what I had Dovet do was to pick a uh, a couple songs uh, that he wanted to talk about. Mm. Uh, some things that would be, uh, you know, whether it's an important time in his life, whether it's just a, one of his favorite songs from any hip hop era. So I got a baby face, but look, I'm older than I look and I know some shit. <laughs> so um, the first song we're going to jump into, one of the songs that we uh, we talked about was uh, Meek Mill, mm. Dreams and Nightmares. Mm. So as many of you guys know, <laughs> Dreams and Nightmares, Meek Mill's uh, debut album, right. uh, the actual song Dreams and Nightmares. Nightmares was the first track on the self-entitled album, Dreams and Nightmares. Um, and it was really your first look at, at who Meek Will was. He had a lot of hype coming up. Shout out to Maybach Music Group, Rick Ross, everybody. But he had a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, you know, hype behind him. And it was the first glimpse at him. Why did you choose that song? What does that song mean to you? Because it was the first glimpse at him, right? It, it, that song sounded like he was coming out of a cage, man, mm-hmm. running, mm-hmm. man. Mm-hmm. That song sounded like he was like that. My one of my favorite lines is in it. Hold up, wait a minute. Y'all thought I was finished? Yeah. Because he was already spitting an Uzi of lyrics. Well, you remember he started out a little subdued, right? But then it builds up. It's like a train <laughs> yeah. track, and then like, it got crazy. And I, and I knew it then, like when I heard it, like this dude's about to go in. Yeah. Right. And it was almost like. His voice was elevated. He already has that kind of cadence to his voice, right? Yep. And his voice was in charge. Sometimes when hip hop artists are spitting, the music is in charge. Like you hear the music more than you hear what they say. On that song, Meek made sure you, I, listen, I got something to say, exactly. I got something to prove, and exactly. I'm gonna prove it right, man. That, man, that's one of the baddest, bro. Exactly, and for the listeners, the podcast listeners, we'll give you a little clip right now. Um, but but no, it was an incredible song, man. I, I really felt that, uh, again, it just, it has so much, it has so much oomph behind it. That was my thing, is I was listening to it, and I had to run it back, and, uh, and I was just, I was just kind of taken aback by, yeah, like you said, like Uzi, that, like machine gun. He just, he just came at it and he was just hitting it hard. It was amazing. Um, second song I asked you to choose, um, and the song that we talked about, um, and same thing, you know, I'm 1997, I think, is when this song came mm. out. Um, Victory, Puff Daddy and the Family. And for the podcast listeners, we'll give you a listen of, to it right now. Um, Victory was on the uh, No Way Out album. Mm-hmm. Puff, and this was, and it was, it was kind of an interesting time because it was right after uh, Big died. Mm. Um, and a lot of people, um, maybe some hip hop heads out there, uh, know this. Um, Victory was the very last song that Biggie recorded. Did you know that? I didn't know that. The last song he recorded. He got shot the very next day in Los Angeles. Damn. Um, so I remember uh, when it first came out, man, and I don't know if you uh, can can quite envision the video. The video was like eight minutes long. Busta Rhymes, it had a bunch of cameos from some Hollywood guys. But um, they sampled, uh, I think it was a Rocky or, or uh, some type of fight movie so- uh, song in the uh, very beginning. Mm-hmm. And you remember how it kind of came in with that little 
kind of dramatic, kind of dark feeling. And then Biggie came in and it was really a, a, a mafioso type of sure. a, uh, sure. a song. But um, literally, man, when I when I first heard that song, I had one of those feelings like, what the fuck just happened? To me? Right. I remember growing up watching Michael Jackson's Bad, seeing the video. It was like this long, drawn out, all right, land the plane already, play the song. Because when you saw right. a video, the music started, the, the, the acting started, the scenery started, and it was done. The video was over. But like Michael Jackson's Bad or Thriller, anything that he did, it was more of a show. It was a, you That's know right. what I mean? Right. And I remember listening to, Victor, uh, listening Victory. to Victory mm -hmm. and like closing my eyes and, envi and visualizing everything that was happening because again it was like listening to a movie it was a movie you know, know what i mean and it and it and, and it every how much. character had a different depth be it be it uh buster rhymes with the raspy gargoyle type thing you remember the yep, video yep, yep, you feel yep, me yep be it biggie he was up prowess. he was up on the roof watching yo, everything the puffy, thing, puffy yo, was yo, running was through the streets like, getting chased you could see it yeah while you were listening yeah. to it and these dudes were bringing man i love those type of collabs man shout out to biggie i love you i miss you shout out to puffy my man um bad boy bad boy man so they were just at a different time doing different things and taking different risks yeah when i think of the depth of biggie and tupac I think of the elevation of uh, Jay-Z. Correct. I think of the elevation of Diddy. I think of those two guys being specifically like, now what do we do? Correct. Like, what do we do for the culture? What do we do for our careers? What do we do to keep, not only keep their voice alive, but I think it opened up some amazing opportunities. It was right. a lane that was open, right? Definitely. And they, they really ran on that lane, Jay, Jay especially, um, uh, and just owned it. And we miss those guys, man. I mean, I mean, you look back, there's there's every argument every day about who's the best top five, everything like that. But just hearing that song, um, and for me it's a it's a concept song, you know, there's there's a theme and I felt like uh, Biggie was the perfect person to put on that that song to be able to ride with a the theme. The very first his very first line in the song. In the commission, you asked for permission mm. to hit him. Mm. And so he took that and he carried it along. I mean, both verses mm. were these long, mob, he, was, he was a mob boss in these mm. videos, in these verses, and he just carried it along, man. And it it literally, I'm, I'm, you see, I can even watch it, uh, listen to it now. 20 years later, I'm just sitting there in my car and I'm listening to it. And it's like a deep behind the scenes glimpse mm. of mob life mm. with this hard beat in the mm. back and I'm just listening and I'm like, he is mm. just shitting on it. Right. He, it was, it was right. perfect, right. man. It was that perfect. Not that he's shitting so much, but you could see the best rappers, in my opinion, are painters. Exactly. They paint pictures and help you visualize he was stories, be it Nas, be it M, be it J. Um, be it some of the greats, be it, be it Push T, be it Drake Today. You know, these guys, they tell and, and, and what they do with their lyrics. They make in you terms feel. Of just, they you know, make you, you know feel. What I mean? There's emotion attached to it. So, to me, that's what music is. You know, my pops growing up listening to Earth, Wind & Fire, mm -hmm. Commodore. Right. Like, that's cool, but I understand why you like that vibe, right? right. Because it, it, there were stories that were being told by the Marvin Gaye's and the Commodore's and the OJ's of the world. Right. Well, hip-hop is just that to me. There's stories being told. There's, there's. I'm able to relate to. Oh, oh, you down on Marcy? You, know, you know what I mean? And you, you're painting a picture, whether I was there or not. You made me see what you saw. Exactly, man. And, and that's what I miss today. Yeah, storytellers. 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 Uh, lyrical geniuses. The and way you ever overlap beats. And do we talk about this all the time? I and I guess you know when, when I think about it, there definitely are some geniuses and some. It's, it's, it's no just, doubt, no doubt it, in my mind. I guess if you even look at it back then, you know, let's say, let's set the scene. Let's pretend like it's 1996 right now. Okay. You had you had uh, Pac before his death. You had Biggie. There's only there's only a couple guys. Not a lot of a lot of guys that were true storytellers, truly at the top of their game. Same thing now. You got a couple guys, the Kanyes, mm -hmm. production. You know, you got a lot of lyricists out there that are really killing things, but. And it's a short list. It's yeah. definitely a short list yeah. of guys that make you really feel that passion, man. I remember when the first time I saw uh, the video, I was a teenager, and uh, it was a summertime. I was in Virginia, uh, and and literally, man, I I 
I played the song and I didn't know what the fuck had happened to me. I ran that song back. I'm pretty sure it was a CD. <laughs> I ran that song back. Dale, do you know what CDs are? CD? No. Dale doesn't. Our cameraman doesn't know what CDs are. First of all, are. Dale's Dale 20 years CDs. old. Like he's, he's like, what? Literally, man, I was running it back and back and back and just the production, man. That was probably the first song that I could say at a young age that I fell in love with. Dope. I fell in love with victory. Dope. And I I'm glad I picked it on my over list. Over and over. When you, well, I think when you, when uh, I got the text, I, I responded back. I was like, oh shit. Done. I was Done. like, oh shit. Let's go. We could talk all day about victory, man. Amazing album. It was right after Biggie's death. Um, but just a classic album. Classic. Followed, uh, you know, it was two, preceded by two months for, uh, for with Life After Death. Uh, Life After Death. By the way, uh, Jermaine Stone, one of my uh, close friends, co-writer of Wine and Hip Hop, interviewed Easy Mo B. Shout out to Easy Mo B. Thank you for that that art that you created, man. We really appreciate that. Um, last song, man. Last song. Last song. There it is. Now I know Dale was uh, a child. A little baby um, kind of ties in the whole theme and it's funny that we picked all East Coast songs I grew up in the East Philly Meek we picked uh, Victory and then the last song that, uh, that, that we want to talk about is uh, What More Can I Say by Jay-Z so you where, do you, where do you start with this? What you more know, can I say? There, where do you, where do there, you, there, where do you start you, you with You start with that title. You know, he's, in other words, I think Jay was just in a space. He was ready to retire, uh, dive into maybe business or whatever he wanted to do. He was like, I've proven myself. What more can I say before you give me my just due? Were you okay with him leaving? Because no. he was ready to step. He, he was, no, he, he was, I, I was and I wasn't. That's like asking, are you okay with Michael Jordan? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Are you okay with Michael leaving? Um, no, I'm not okay with Michael Jordan leaving. I don't even know if LeBron is alive yet. Did you Did you think he would come back? Did you um, think yeah. that Jay Z was done? No, I knew he'd come back. Okay. Because he realized, I realized that he may realize that the game still needs him. Exactly. Right. And I just think he was just in a different space, or maybe he was burnt out, or maybe we don't know. Maybe his focus became more business entrepreneurial. He was like, this is now, say, I've already proved, what more, what more can I say? I've proven, listen, <laughs> never been a nigga this good for this long, this hood or this hot, this pop or this strong, with so many different flows, this one's for this song. This one will get bit up. You fuck, you crazy? Come on. So that alone, that opening line was like, come on. I've proven myself. And he, he rewound everything. God forgive me for my brash delivery, but I remember vividly what the streets did to me. Paint me like a pickany. I mean, he brought everything back into perspective, and he it it was it was a, it was perfect. We talked about songwriters. We talked about storytellers. It was perfect because he went back to the beginning and told you the whole story. And what I love most about that song specifically. It wasn't about a hook. It wasn't about a repetitious chorus. It was just Jay Z. Yeah. It was. That, I, that CEO, that's me. And I see myself in, like, with anything, I see myself in the songs I listen to, right? You know, I started from nothing and built myself up to something. That CEO, that was me. I think you feel me? So I remember being in the living room with my boys, blasting that thing on a thousand, my both speakers in the background, spitting word for word, line for line with such passion, because it was me, my G. I think, I think that that was a time in Jay-Z's career, just like you said, where he was ready to do something different. I took over everything. And I also, feel if you listen to the beginning of that third verse now you know your ass is willy when they got you in the mag with half for like half philly. a milli when your ass ain't, ain't lily, lily white that, that mean that, that shit you write right must be illy. illy either that or, or your flow is silly, silly. he is both he's he's saying it's both he's he's throwing the argument out there and he's saying he, he's basically saying listen i'm i'm not only the best artist out right now but here is why and and, and it's funny because he's almost it's almost a rhetorical question. Either that 
Well, well, sorry, uh, your ass ain't Willy when it got you in the mag for like half a milli and your ass ain't Lily White. That mean that shit you write must be illy. Either that or your flow is silly. I the mean, shit I write is ill and my flow is silly. It's like, it's, it's like, it's like, duh, it's both. I don't mean to boast, but, but damn, if I don't brag. This cracker's gonna act like I ain't on there yet. And I felt like that was a time where he really became who he is. You look at Jay-Z now, close to a billion. Uh, one of my huge, huge inspirations of my life. I, I pretty much uh, uh, read and follow everything that Jay-Z does. It's a great inspiration to not only hip hop culture, but to the black culture. But I felt like that was him telling the corporate world, telling the rest of the I'm world, coming. I'm coming and I'm, I'm more than an artist. I'm more than an artist, here I come. But I think that's the struggle, right? The struggle is this, the struggle is, okay, I have the ability to do this and write the lyrics, but there's also a hustler in me that doesn't... See, the difference between Jay-Z, I feel, and some rappers, some rappers are just, they, they, they see a tree. Yo, the tree is this money. You see all this cake I'm getting, all this paper I'm getting, right. they just see a tree. Jay-Z sees an entire forest. Right. Jay-Z is a visionary. So, in my mind, it's like... He was at a position in his life to say, okay, I can continue down this rap road mm -hmm. or I can continue to see Rockefeller grow. Exactly. Or I can continue to see Rockaware grow. Or I can continue to do 4040. Or I can continue to invest in this. Or maybe I'll be the president of Def Jam for one more year and bring these people up and now Def Jam's paying me their money. So he had so many different outlets that deter that needed his attention he just got to the point i feel in that song like yo i've proven myself over and over again to all you haters all you non-believers all you out there who may think that i'm not the best at this right. i don't have to say nothing else but let me say it anyway i mean you feel me i mean that to me is just and what i, I think to, to just expand on it for a second what i love most is Oftentimes, people feel that we are just what they see. Mm -hmm. LeBron is just a basketball player. Kobe Bryant is just a basketball player. Michael Jordan is just a basketball Jay-Z is just a rapper. Right? It's kind of like, we, a, kind of like a shut up and dribble 100%, mentality. 100%. He is saying, like the aforementioned, I'm more than that. I'm so much more. When you ask me, Niggas got a what? problem, Houston. They can't shut up me, shut down I, not even P.E. I'm, I'm a ride. ride. He said that. God forgive me from a brash delivery. He said that 15 years ago. Come on, man. He said that 15 years ago. Come on. I because he knew then what we all have learned now, which is this guy is so much more than just a rapper. You yep. right? So when I listen to that song, I know I'm so much more than just a trainer. I'm so much more than just a gym owner. You follow what I'm saying? I'm mm -hmm. so much more than a product endorser or a television personality, right? To me, it's like, I'm gonna give you more. You don't know that I'm, I'm, a, I'm an excellent painter and I paint murals. You don't know that about me. You don't know that I cook right. and was taught by a, 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 a professional chef how to make some of the best gourmet dishes. You don't know that, I don't talk about that, but you best believe it's there. And it's not just about me and my God-given talents, but it's about inspiring kids to not feel limited to become one thing. What do you want to be when you grow up? The best line I ever heard, everything. I read something about you, it was a line, and it was, it was perfect. Um, it was short, it was to the point. It said, I'm a renaissance man. Mm. A lot of people don't know that. Mm. And it speaks to what you just said. Mm. I'm a renaissance man. I do A, I do B, I do C. And it's sometimes it's more than just what you see. Like you said, Jay-Z was trying to prove to people, I'm more than what you see. I'm a CEO. And as of now, I can be a billionaire. One of my favorite movies is the Thomas Crown Affair. Mm -hmm. The remake that um, Pierce Brunson did. There's this guy who is a huge businessman, multi, multi, multi-millionaire in the business world, very smart, be it Wall Street, whatever, but part-time, he's an art thief. Right. So he's stealing, and in comes this woman, hired by 
here comes this woman paid by Rene Russo, I think. Was it Rene Russo? Mm. I'm messing the name up. I know Pierce Brosnan. Yeah, anyway, she was hired by the insurance company and said, you gotta get our painting back. Right. She ends up falling in love with this dude. Right. And this dude knew fast cars, he looked at her, he knew her size, what she wore, you're about a 4'6", whatever that might be. He had his own little private plane that he knew how to fly. He negotiated a multi-million dollar bill, 300 million that he just walked out of. He knew wine. Yep. I liken myself to that. I'm looking at Maya dudes like that, that dudes like Diddy, dudes like Jay, yep. dudes like Obama, yep. to say, yeah, I, I'm this, exactly. I'm so much more. Just behind this veil, pull this veil back. Exactly. Come and see, come and learn, come and find out. This is about inspiration. I uh, know few people more inspiration than this guy. This is about Jay-Z. Thank you, Jay-Z. Jay-Z's uh, place in culture, and, and, and I'm gonna jump out and say this, but Jay-Z's place in culture, um, in hip-hop culture, he's been doing this now for uh, 25, 30 years. You, can, you, you, you throw him up there with, with Biggie and Pop. I mean, if, if anything, he's more of a, you know somebody who's transcended. He's like a LeBron James. LeBron James doesn't just dribble the basketball. He doesn't just he's win more, championships. He, yeah, he, he's more like a, a Michael Jordan. Some, but yeah, some, some, yeah something, something recently that happened was uh, LeBron opening the I Promise School. You know, he's he's way more than an athlete. It's not about it's not about what he does on the court. It's just about just as much what he does off the court. Jay Z, same thing. I can rap. I can run a record label, but I can also uh, run multiple businesses and make the world better at the same time. It's incredible, man. It's an incredible story for sure. Um, Dovet, I think we're gonna wrap up, man. South African wine again. Best. This is this is a blessing right here. Um, Chenin Blanc. If you ever out on a hot day like this, damn, I want to be on the beach right there. But if you ever out on a hot day like this, you want like some Chardonnay or like some uh, Sauvignon Blanc, something like kind of crisp. Try Chenin Blanc and support the people in South Africa. Get this Sadie family. It's great shit. Bro, Pleasure. it's always good to see you. Always good Pleasure. to see you. I appreciate you taking time thank out. You, bro. Your birthday's tomorrow. Yes, Happy sir. Happy birthday. Thank you, thank you, thank you. This is the West Coast Wine and Hip Hop. Thank you, guys. We signing out.